It's a cold, rainy October morning on the Duck River. And these biologists are on the hunt for bugs. Cynthia's gonna do what we call the benthic boogie, baby. Come on. They call it the benthic boogie, kicking up loose gravel on the riverbed. We stir up the substrate really good, so we get a lot of good creek critters for these young'uns to look at. The young'uns are fifth graders at Chapel Hill Elementary School. They were supposed to be in the river this morning doing their own benthic boogie, but rainy weather washed that opportunity away. So John is taking the river to the kids. Look at that little one. My guys look like they fly around like a dragonfly does. There's something in there. We spread those aquatic insects out in tubs, and we had the kids come in and actually sort those organisms into lookalike groups. This is in a skinny little tail. See how little skinny these tails are? The other thing we looked at were some of the, what we call physical chemical parameters, the amount of oxygen in the water, the temperature, the pH, nitrates, phosphates, or fertilizers. I kind of see some pieces, don't you guys? So keep shaking, shake, shake, shake. What's this? That's a banded sculpin. That's a nice little bottom fish. The kids use the information they gather to find out how clean the ducks' waters really are. We had them looking at bug cards that group the insects into groups according to how sensitive they are to pollution. If you find a bunch of organisms that are pollution sensitive, that means it's not polluted. And that's pretty much what we found today. The kids were impressed. They also begin to see how people's actions might harm the river. There's a bunch of paths straight down to the river. What do you think happens there when it rains? It's a slippery mudslide. Slippery mudslide. Do you guys know what the number one cause of water pollution is? Dirt, mud, <coughs> sediment, we call it. Since the kids couldn't make it down to the river, John showed them some video of the area. When they saw how much erosion there is all along the banks, the kids came up with some ways that they could help. There's a fence behind me. That was their idea. There are concrete picnic tables. The kids suggested that those be moved out farther away from the river because they noticed erosion pathways going down the creek bank. What was the reaction when they saw some of this? Well, we need to fix it. And they came up with several different ideas. One was to build steps down here to control that. One was to plant more trees. The benefits of trees are? Trees! After a quick pep talk and a lesson in tree planting. And you kind of get a mark about where the top of the Root ball is. The kids enthusiastically put their plan into action. Let's go see! Let's go see! I got it! Let's go see! Oh, there's a lot of leaves. Yeah, what is the net for? They've gone through this learning process where they've collected their own information, you know, new data, and they've taken that information and they've turned it into an action project. Put it is in there. It feels good because you're helping the environment and it just means a lot to people. Trees help us a lot. They give us air to breathe. And help control flooding. Those tree roots allow floodwaters to absorb into the creek bank. So it literally makes that riparian or streamside zone a sponge. And it can hold untold amounts of floodwaters. So that reduces flooding on us. It also means that in the drier periods, there's more water flowing back into the river. For the kids, coming out on a cold winter day and planting these trees is all about one thing. So we could save the environment. I wanted to help the environment. Yeah, help the environment. But trees aren't the only things being planted here. Ideas about action and involvement are taking root as well. The main thing that we really hope that they'll get out of this experience is that they can make a difference, but it's only if they participate. They're going to make decisions for our state and for our rivers, and we really want to start them out young and you know, helping them understand how these systems work and what they can do to help in their own daily lives. This park is their park and they've got to take care of it for themselves, for future generations, for the rest of their community. Our hopes are they'll plant these, the trees here. They are involved and engaged with planting this tree and they will come back and check on these trees to watch them grow. 
I'm Ken Tucker on Tennessee's Wild Side.